Well, hello. How is everyone doing? You know, um, we've had an interesting, and to me anyway, it's an interesting uh, subject today, and it revolves around motivation. And what I've been seeing over the last oh, few days at least is that a number of people have been putting out posts. They've been putting out different um, ideas about they have lost their motivation right now. And so I wanted to really, you know, come on and give a brief, you know, uh, concept of how I deal with it. Because there are times that I deal with losing my motivation as well. Hey, Sarah, how you doing? Um, so overcoming the loss of motivation, one of the very first things that I would like to say is that it is normal to lose motivation. And really, one of the things that I have come to understand about myself is that when it happens, normally I've been running through yield signs and stop signs in my life. And uh, hi Shelly, hi Richard, thank you for being here. And what I mean by that is that we have put on so many things in front of uh, the, you know, we haven't taken the breaks. We haven't, we have run out of us in the process. And so when we look at the word motivation, and to me it's about movement. And hey, Raul, thanks for being here. Um, so the first thing I would like to recommend is when we have this feeling like we're walking or running in molasses, that it, the, the more energy that we put in, the less results that we're getting and the less fun, where we start really questioning whether or not what we are doing is worthwhile. Does anybody even appreciate what we do? Is it, you know, what is it that I could do that would give me more fulfillment? So the first thing that I would say is slow down, or, and this is one of the only places that I suggest this, sometimes we have to go to a dead stop. We have to separate ourselves from what is going on to be able to get any perspective at all. And so that might look like taking a break from social media. It might be uh, taking a couple of days away from the phone, just taking a, a sabbatical, if you will, to be able to what I call rebooting and getting that perspective back. And so I wanted to give you the, the five steps that I've come to embrace about how to reboot. And so the first thing is when you do that slowdown or that, that stoppage of the just piling on, is taking stock of what it is that is causing this motivation loss. A lot of times it's about overwhelm. And when we are overwhelmed, we just get to, you know, there's an old adage, uh, what, all work and no play makes Jack or Jill a dull person. And so we lose our edge, we lose our purpose, we lose that ability to see the benefit that not only that we are receiving, but that for what we're giving to those that we're serving. And so just take stock, take a piece of paper out and write down what are the things that you have on your plate right now. And this goes a little bit back to the time management because what are the things that are most valuable to you? Which are the things that are most valuable, valuable to the people that you serve? And so we have a tendency to say yes a lot. And there's a time in, 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 that we all get full. There, there is a, when we get to that overflow, and that's where I say sometimes we go through and we go through the stop signs, we go through the yield signs when we just are violating the true ability of our energy and our time to be able to serve and keep serving at the level that we want to. Uh, the second thing is to do something different. Take a, so I just saw a post from a, a friend of mine out in California where they said, you know, they were having a hard time with their motivation, so they went out to the golf course. And it was something they hadn't done for a while. So whatever it might be that gives you that that ability to just separate yourself. For me, I love going to movies. And so if there's a great movie out, I'll take myself to a movie. And you know, my kids are always surprised that I've actually seen a movie and took time out to do it. But I'm able to immerse myself into a story. So it, it gives me a true separation from what I'm dealing with at that period, moment in time, that period in time. But doing something different allows you to actually get some movement in a different direction, which also gives you perspective. 
The next thing is something that none of us really, really enjoy doing. I, you know, it's very difficult because we've been trained not to do it is ask for help. Is get a perspective, or perspective of what is going on, asking even someone that you trust and not in doing something for you, but giving you a reflection because that reflection can give us perspective and also give us insights about maybe how to get out of that funk, but also how to alleviate going back into it. Because if we haven't changed something uh, in the process, more than likely we're going to have a, a recycling of that in our business and our lives, and we'll start thinking there's something wrong with us. When in reality, we just might be off kilter in a place that we're not able to see. So asking for help. Now, if there's something asking for help, truly in doing some of the things that you're wanting to implement in your business or there's nothing wrong with that as well it, because as we grow we're going to have to expand within our teams to be able to get everything done in fact on monday of this year, of this week my virtual assistant who has been with me for nine years has decided to retire the the virtual assisting part of it and it was like oh golly now I get to expand my team because what she was doing, I'm actually bringing on two different people to do. And so it's change and it can feel overwhelming and all of the, the things that go along with something new. But by chunking it down and trusting a system and asking for help, I'm able to put that into perspective and still be on target for those that I'm serving. Um, when we get to a point where we're re-engaging, and this is really important, when we get to that point where we're just saying, okay, I'm back in the game, this is when we have a tendency to put it out at 100 miles an hour. What I'm going to suggest is chunk back into the process. So taking the things that are, again, the most valuable, put those into your, your process, getting started. You know, it, it's that uh, walk before you run. But also, when you're chunking, you're able to get some accomplishments. You're able to get some of the successes in the process so that the fulfillment starts coming back and the motivation then is stimulated. It's almost like the starter fluid for motivation is success. And having those little uh, uh, elements that we can show ourselves, this is something I did, this is something I've accomplished, this is someone I helped. And when we do that, then it gives us that internal motivation to go out and do it again. And most of the things that all of us do that are, are part of this community, we risk because we're risking people either liking what we do or not liking it or accepting it or actually taking what we have to offer and implementing, getting a result. And so we're putting ourselves out there on a risk basis every single day. And when we can show ourselves that, yes, there are people that are appreciating what we have, they're able to use what we have and get a benefit out of it, that allows us to go through some of those times when it may be a little more difficult working with a person or an organization or a company. And then the, the last thing is plan for your next safe harbor. And what I mean by that is that if we know that we can do something Maybe it's a little more difficult or we have a timing where we're doing, uh, that we're doing something that is maybe a little more taxing. But if we know that in a week and a half, you have carved out that safe harbor where you're going to disengage, you're going to be able to fill yourself back up, you're going to be able to uh, take what you have, fine tune it. It's sharpening the saw, that analogy of sharpening the saw. And so what we're doing is giving ourselves permission to go through, and uh, I call it short timing. You know, it's like back in school when we have done, had, maybe we had a class or we had a teacher that we weren't really, uh, hey, Ted, thanks for coming on. Uh, that it really wasn't that enjoyable, but we needed it for our major and we had to get through it. But we knew that in 13 weeks or eight weeks or six weeks, whatever the case may be, it was going to be over. We could get through it because we knew that it wasn't going to go on forever and ever and ever. And so when we start planning out those safe harbors in our calendar, that we know that once we get there, then we can relax, we can refresh, and we can reboot again. But if we don't have that, the tendency again is to repeat what we have done in the past where we run through those yield signs and those stop signs. So hopefully that gives you a couple of ideas of 
you know, how to regain that momentum, the, the momentum in the motivation. Because the thing that we feel at times that we've lost our motivation, I don't think that it's really a loss. I think we've misplaced it. I think we've disengaged with the motivation so that we're no longer feeling it and we feel like it went away. But as we slow down and we re-engage and re my phone is saying it was going to buy, it's getting low. Uh, at that point, then it gives us that permission to go out and re-engage in the game again. So guys, uh, again, I'm, I, 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 you know, I apologize for not being on the last two weeks. The, the Thursday before the boot camp, it just was so crazy. There were some things that happened and I didn't get on. And then uh, last week I was actually sick. And so that's just something that does not happen to me. And I don't, I'm not a really good patient, but I am committed to doing these every Thursday. And I appreciate each and every one of you for being on and your comments and your likes and your, your hearts and all of the things that you do. And let me know how I can support you. And, you know, 2020 is going to be one of those pivotal years for a lot of us. And uh, it's just a, just a pleasure to be able to go and, you know, travel this journey together. So with that, I will see you next Thursday, if not before, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.